So, episode four. If I had a magical telephone, what I would do is I would take that magical telephone and I would call up a couple of people and some of them would be John Party and Luke Bryan and other modern country music artists that are mainstream. And I would say, just so we're clear, just so we're clear, this is what country music sounds like to the rest of us that aren't blinded by our mansions and millions of dollars. All right, so I guess episode four is going to start off with some hot takes. Let's talk about this album. This is The Birds. The Birds were really special because they started off in 1964 as basically a response from the west coast of the United States to the Beatles. And uh, they featured Roger McGinn on 12-string electric guitar and David Crosby, who helped sing, and a guy named Chris Hillman, who was helping write, and some other uh, musicians that I've since forgotten. And so then they go, and then they do this, this thing with, like, they do records that are closely associated with Bob Dylan and other uh, contemporary artists at the time that were breaking a lot of ground. And Bob Dylan said that the birds were doing a lot of things that other people hadn't even thought of yet. And uh, that was how they, they got their initial success. And then what do they do after initial success? David Crosby leaves, and he goes and starts this thing called uh, Crosby, Stills, Nash & Young, and maybe you've heard of it. But Roger McGinn and Chris Hillman go, okay, we got to do something different now. Let's find somebody new. So then they find a guy named Graham Parsons, who helped introduce the world to our previous episodes, Emmylou Harris. And then after, uh, after they have a really popular record named Sweetheart of the Rodeo, they, Chris Hillman and Graham Parsons leave. And leaving Roger McGinn as the only sole founding member. And that's what brings us this Bird's Era. So this is volume two of their greatest hits cycle, which is cool because it, it picks up after they leave. And what they did was they took all of the local session musicians and then they rebuilt the band. But one thing Graham Parsons did before he left was he said, hey, let's do the birds, but let's do the birds country. And everyone was like, this is a crazy idea. And Roger McGinn, who I initially really didn't like, but now I really do like, uh, was like, you know what? That's just crazy enough of an idea that it might work. And then it produced this sound. They got a guy named Clarence White, who was just a local session musician. That's him all the way over here. This is uh, Gene Parsons. This is Skip Dutton. And this is Roger McGinn. And they're like, you know what? Let's keep this country music thing going. We don't need Graham Parsons. And then their next greatest hit cycle on their 10th album and uh, a couple of previous albums after they had left was super cool. And this is a song called Drugstore Truck Driving Man. And it has one of my favorite single lines in it ever, which is post-Vietnam era. It's, he's got him a medal that he won in the war, and it weighs 500 pounds, and it sleeps on his floor. And uh, I think it talks a lot about issues that people were bringing back from the Vietnam era that no one was willing to discuss. So it's really, it's really a great record for the time. And so uh, I wanted to do an obscure country music artist that I think a lot of people don't closely associate with country music unless they look into them. That's the birds. And uh, this has been episode four. Thank you for listening. And uh, at some point before this three-day weekend is over, fire up Spotify and go and listen to some birds. If you're a country music fan, they will not do you wrong. And as always, thank you for listening.